you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. This is the last of our uh, topical sermons. I have subtitled these Christian Living. And uh, we've kind of went through a gamut of things the last six weeks. And next week we are going to observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, I just uh, feel like it is time. Uh, God always shares with me uh, when it is time. And so we'll do that next week. And then I'll go right into the book of Matthew. And I will say, already starting to study Matthew, I've had a change of heart. I was going to start in chapter 3, uh, but I did not like the flow of the way that started. Uh, so we're going to start in chapter 1, and you're going to hear the Christmas story in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Only because God told me to do it. Uh, but already He has given me a sermon uh, that I had not thought of and uh, I, I think you'll like it. I really do. You know, our heart is so important. Uh, that's where Jesus comes into uh, all the issues of life, Proverbs tells us, is in our heart. And really when it comes, I spoke two weeks ago on spiritual warfare, and the battle is in your mind, in your will, and in your body. Jesus has already got your heart. But I am telling you, our mind, there's a lot of battling going on in our mind. The will, this is an issue that I have a problem with. I have a eating disorder, okay? This, this thing's too big. It always wants to eat. And, and I know people are just almost laughing about it, but I have, in my lifetime, I've lost 596 pounds. <laughs> Now, I'll lose 40, I'll lose 50, I'll lose 30, but I am telling you, my will, and you're going to see, we all struggle with the will. There is something that will get your goat every time, and mine is buffets. <laughs> and then your body, and this, this again is real, folks, there is so much junk out on our phones and, and the airwaves. They'll have, and I, I don't have a phone that I can look at. I don't have what, one of them smartphones. I'm too dumb for a smartphone, okay? And things just pop up. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, some of it is bad, folks. It is just bad. Parents, you have to put a filter. Parents, you need to know what your kids are seeing and what they are watching. So Paul, here in our Scripture, deals with this in an extremely uh, honest way, okay? And the battle within is the title of my, my sermon today. And if you have a bulletin, you want to follow along with us. Number one, the law cannot save you. The law cannot save you. The scribes and Pharisees tried that out, and uh, Jesus told them that does not work. Number two, your will cannot sustain you. You can will it for a while, but I am telling you, our flesh is weak. Number three, only Jesus can set you free. Folks, there is victory in Jesus. In Romans 7, the Apostle Paul speaks of his personal account of an inner conflict of one thing pulling at him in one direction and another thing pulling him in the opposite direction. You have to remember, Paul was an apostle a soul winner, a preacher, a teacher, a church planner, and a missionary, all while doing much work in God's kingdom. From his personal experience, the battle was real, and the conflict was extremely intense at times. Spiritual warfare is intense. This battle in our mind is intense. Paul was a spiritual and mature Christian, but realized that even in his own life, he fell short of being the spiritual man that God wanted him to be. And I believe as he wrote the book of Romans, he was older in life, and he was looking back at when he was first saved. Okay? And you have to understand, when you get saved, you're a babe in Christ. You don't know the Word of God. You're not familiar with the Holy Spirit. So a lot of times when we are young Christians, we make wrong choices. But hopefully, the longer we are saved and the longer we go to church and the longer we pray and the longer we, you know, seek God in everything we are, we mature in Christ. He was finding out the closer we get to God, 
the more we can see Him for what He is truly, truly is. Breaking God's law and hurting our personal fellowship with Jesus Christ. The more we sin, it is breaking God's law and hurting our personal fellowship with Christ. Paul had no trust in his own achievements or in his own goodness. Let's look at his view of how to have victory over sin by being in Jesus Christ. And again, folks, the heart is Jesus's, but the battle is the mind, the soul, and the body. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. All right? God's law is God's word. Okay? The Ten Commandments are things we need to obey. Even some doctor nowadays says we don't have to use the Old Testament and you don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. Folks, I think they're wrong in what they are teaching. We need to, to realize that God's law has not changed. His commandments are the same yesterday and, te- and, and today and in the future. It never changes. So he is saying the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Before you were saved, you did what you wanted to do. If your flesh wanted something, you bought something. Or if it wanted to engage in an activity, you did that. And God has never made you do something. Okay? We can go back to Adam and Eve. It was a choice. Satan lied to Eve. Satan believed what, I mean, Eve believed what Satan said. And she made a bad choice. And Adam did the very same thing. And here's what I'm saying. Nobody makes you sin. Nobody. Do you know the biggest problem in the Scripture that we are going to find? The word I is used 26 times in Scripture right here. Paul says, I, I, I. You know what Paul is saying? who, again, is one of my biblical heroes, he's saying, I have a problem. And that problem is sin. And folks, every one of us battles sin every day of our lives. Hey, you know what I've noticed? Satan doesn't take days off. The demons don't take days off. They're always there. And and Paul is saying, the law is spiritual, but it cannot save you. I am carnal. I I am in the flesh at times, sold under sin. Sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Here is the struggle. Here is the battle within. He is saying, even as a Christian, even as a a more mature believer, I battle inside. The things that I know I should be doing, I'm not doing. The things that I know I should not be doing, I'm doing. And folks, it is sin. It is sin. Then, if then, I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is is good. And he's saying we need to be in the Word of God. We need the law of God in our life. Why? The law is spiritual. The law is good. The law uh, shows us that we are sinners. How would we know that we've sinned if we did not have the law? But the law cannot change you. Only Jesus can change you. And it says, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Paul is saying, man, wouldn't it be neat if you got saved, there was no more temptation? Wouldn't it be neat if you didn't have to battle that every day? Well, folks, there is going to be a day when that happens. When we get to heaven, there is no sin. There is no battle. There is no temptation. And I am telling you, I cannot wait to get to heaven. It is a perfect place. But until then, this sin, this old nature, okay, dwells in me. I don't lose my old nature. Hopefully, eventually, I can control it. I can make the right decisions 
nearly every time. And I say nearly because no one is perfect. Only Jesus Christ, he proved he is the Son of God by living here 33 years and never sinning one time. And I got news for you folks, you are not him. I am not him. Every day I battle with my old nature. Every day I make choices in my life. I want to do what's right, but this old nature keeps coming up in me. Hold your finger there. Well, you don't even have to hold your finger. Go across the page. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Boy, I'm telling you, Satan loves to condemn us. All right, he'll say things to you like, and you call yourself a Christian? Are you, are you sure you're saved? Did that come out of your mouth? All right, Jesus, I'm telling you, when he saved us, he saved all of us. Sometimes we don't act saved. Sometimes we don't talk saved. Sometimes we don't go where saved pe- we don't go, uh, we go to where saved people shouldn't go. But there is no condemnation. Okay? It is not a license to sin, folks. It's just that this battle is going on and Satan's not going to give up. And he is simply saying, Jesus Christ does not condemn us. He helps us, folks. And I'll share that in the second point. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So he gives us a huge key on how to have victory over sin. Every day of our life, we are either walking in the Spirit or walking in the flesh. And folks, I don't have to be around somebody long to know which one it is. There's this thing we have. It's called attitude. Okay? And people will deny it. People will say, make excuses. People will do all kinds of things to excuse away bad behavior. And folks, I am telling you, we are either in the flesh or we are in the Spirit. And you know what I have found? It doesn't take long to get from one to the other. One thing, one thing, one second could set us off. And folks, there's this battle going on inside of us. For the law of the Spirit is life in Jesus Christ. Has me, made me free from the law of sin and death. It does not mean, when, when it says free, it does not mean I'm not going to ever sin. There's no way. But we have a choice. We have a choice. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through, his, through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. God proved that it can be done. God proved, all right, that we can have victory over sin through Jesus Christ on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So what we have to do, folks, is we have to follow the Spirit of God. We have to follow the Word of God. We have to spend time in His Word. We have to spend time in prayer because your flesh is going to uh, raise up somewhere during that day. Verse 5, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. I heard a man say not too long ago, Well, I'm not that bad a Christian. <laughs> I just really didn't know how to respond to that. Okay? I'm not that bad. Well, number one, what's that bad? What's your definition of that? And you know what they're doing in their mind? They're looking at somebody else, and they're saying, I'm better than that guy. Folks, anybody, I hope you can find someone that is worse than you. Okay? But that's not the bar. The bar is Jesus Christ. I know I'm worse worse than Jesus, but the deal is striving for perfection. Striving for perfection is what we need to do. 
For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the flesh, but those who live in the Spirit, uh, the things of the Spirit. Now here it is. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You only have two choices, folks. Carnal is flesh. Carnal is doing what you want to do. Carnal is following the world. Following is making, carnal is making excuses for the sin that comes up in your life. And folks, we do it all the time. And we have to guard against that. Look at verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor uh, indeed can it be. I'm telling you, our flesh is strong. Those urges are strong. But folks, I'd, I'm just telling you, God can free you from those things. He can free you from those. And it says, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it indeed be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Folks, one of the number one things in my life ought to be to please God. I want to please God in my personal life. I want to please God in my church life. I want to please God in, in the people that I am around. I want to please God in sermon preparation. I want to please God, you know, in where I am and what I say and what I do. And folks, we all need that as a goal in our life to please God. And sometimes even pleasing God upsets others. But folks, I am just telling you, what matters is what God thinks of you, and more than just thinks of you, what God knows about you. Here's the deal with pleasing man. If you start pleasing man, then it's going to become a habit in your life, and you are not going to walk with Jesus Christ. Folks, the Bible tells us, love not the world, Love not the world. And folks, we have to decide, are we going to go with the world or are we going to go with Jesus Christ? So we have to walk in the Spirit. We cannot walk in the flesh. We cannot. And the law cannot save you. Only Jesus Christ saves you. Number two, your will cannot sustain you. I may will it for a while, and I go back again to uh, my, one of my biggest weaknesses is eating. And I am telling you, I'll do good. And e even that, I was doing real good till my birthday. And on my birthday, cake. On my birthday, gift certificates. On my birthday, going out to eat. And do you know what my flesh says? This feels good. This tastes good. Even though my doctor's telling me, hey, you're pre-diabetic. Why are you popping a pill for pre-diabetes and eating ice cream? It makes no sense whatsoever. So this battle is going on in my life, and I'd will it, and I will it. Folks, you can will a lot of things, but it doesn't sustain you. You can do anything for a little while. But folks, when it comes to our relationship with Christ, we need to get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger in Christ as we age. And folks, it takes Holy Spirit power. We use the word willpower. And you can do a lot of things. You can hit goals in weightlifting. You can hit goals in track. You can hit goals in a lot of things. But if you slack in your spiritual life, folks, I am telling you, that is not good. So he is saying here, look what it says, for I know that in me, verse 18, that is my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that, the, uh, what is good, I do not find. You know what I found out the best thing for me to do? If it tastes good, spit it out. <laughs> Don't even put it in your mouth. Learn to graze salad, grilled chicken, baked fish. All right, I'm losing my appetite right now. I want to do it. 
that my, this, this, this organ that I have just wants to be fed and fed and fed. We better move on. Verse 19. (laughs) For the good that I will do, I do not do, but the evil uh, I will, will not to do, I practice. He's saying that again. Folks, anytime uh, the writer says something twice, it is for emphasis. And again, let me say this, okay? I, I don't think I've said this. What may be a sin for me, folks, it's, it's up, that's between you and God, okay? And, you, and I, I do. The w- only way I can, in my mind, lose weight is to make it a sin. Make it to where I, where I feel like God doesn't, uh, you know, God doesn't want me to do that. But you do what it's it's up to you. I'm just giving you a personal example of of something that I struggle with. All right. Now, if I do what I will will not to do, it is no longer I, but sin that dwells in me. And folks, the Holy Spirit is inside of us. The Holy Spirit talks to us. The Holy Spirit should guide us. And we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. I find then a law that is that evil is present with me, the one who wills uh, to do good. And again, what, what he's saying as far as the law, the law is good. But folks, if I am breaking that law and God tells me not to do that, then I, it is sin. It is evil. It is my choosing. And folks, We can blame, you take any habit that you have that is either not healthy or not Christ-like. We can say, so-and-so. You know, I I know one time, you know what I did? I blamed it on Lori. I said, Lori, you started cooking this good, this stuff that's good for you. It tastes terrible, okay? Can you cook something that is good for you and tastes good? And she said, it's impossible. Okay? Why? Because she knows what I like. Biscuits and gravy. Chicken fried steak. All right? And you just go down the list. So she even was tried, and what did I do? I blamed it on her. I blamed it on her cooking. Here's the deal, folks. When you point at somebody else, there's three others pointing right back at you. She wasn't my problem. I was still my problem. Why? Because I, I, I try to will it, but I couldn't. And here's what it says. Uh, wills to do it, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law in my mind. And folks, there's this law. This, this just, it's there. I know I need to eat healthy. Those who know what I'm fixing to say, you're at least 60 or older. Flip Wilson. Angel on one side, devil on the other side. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. And folks, I am telling you that that battle is real in my life. It really is. And until I spiritualize that, I cannot have victory over this issue. Verse 23, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Okay, and, and again, the law cannot save you. The law cannot change you. Okay, only Jesus Christ can change you. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can change you. There is no habit that you cannot break with the help of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You need them all. And folks, I'm all for the 12 steps. If that's the way you choose to do it and it works, you, you go after it. But I am just telling you, it also has to have, or, or, or my opinion, needs to have a spiritual change in our lives also. Romans 8, look again, Romans 8 verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. He's talking to Christians. Okay, he's talking to Christians this whole time. Because people that are lost, they don't worry about it, okay? Their, their deal is to feel, feel good, do it. If I'm not hurting anybody, do it. If I really want to do it, just do it. That's a lost man. But we are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God 
dwells in you. So you can do this, folks. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And folks, I'm not trying to be morbid here, but I'm telling you, a dead man will not sin. A dead man just lays there. There is no reaction. And that's what it means to die to self. All right? Die to self. It's simply saying, I've got to quit doing this. I've got to quit doing what I want to do. I want to live to see uh, my grandkids graduate from high school or college. I want to be able to be there when, when Kylie gets married. I want these things in my life. And those things like that uh, play in the back of my head. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you uh, to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Give you life. Folks, because of Jesus Christ, you can overcome any roadblock in your life. And folks, your will cannot sustain you but Jesus can. But the key is dying to self. Number three, only Jesus can set you free. And, and I just can picture Paul writing in verse 24, O wretched man that I am. What is he saying? And again, folks, he's one of my biblical heroes. But he just saying, man, this is killing me. This is killing me. I've done this for so long in my life and Satan has convinced me that I am not going to change. Folks, you are, li you are living a defeated life. My Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And we have to understand what he is saying. Who would deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, there is victory in Jesus. There is victory in Jesus. So then with the mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. John 15. John 15. John 15, verse 4. Here's a key. Abide in me. How do I abide? Jesus' words. Read your Bible. Go to church. Pray. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Make no provisions for your flesh. Okay? I'm telling you, when I get on a strict diet, I literally have to go in my kitchen with a garbage can and start throwing away chips and all the stuff. I cannot have it there. Or, and, and it calls my name at night. Does anybody else have that problem? <laughs> Those Lay's potato chips, they're right. Nobody can eat just one. Okay? I, I have to, I cannot make provision for my flesh. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in the vine. If you are not a Christian, you are going to struggle with this stuff. And folks, a drinking, any habit, smoking, any habit, you are going to struggle with these things. All right? They cost you money. And I never have figured out why a smoker smokes. You're going to die of lung cancer if you live long enough. But it's still a struggle, and, and I know it is. I am the vine. No, wait a minute. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. You know, it talks about fruit here, and there's two kinds of fruit, folks. The first fruit is the fruits of the Spirit. Those nine fruits of the Spirit need to be active in our lives. But if we are living for the flesh, some of them are not active in our lives. And also fruit is someone else being saved. Someone being saved is fruit. And I don't want my lifestyle to keep someone out of heaven. For without me, you can do nothing. Jesus said, you can't do it without me. You take all the courses you want. You sign up for any class that you want to sign up. But without me, 
you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done unto you. Folks, we have to make it a thing of prayer. When that temptation comes up to us, we have to start praying. God, please help me. Please, God. Man, I've, wa- I've walked down this road. I've done this before. And when I do it, I feel like trash. I feel terrible after I do it. God, help me. Help me is what he is saying. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciple. Then John 8, John 8, John 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, folks, you can be free today. Some of you are bound by sin. You are chained down. You have a habit that you have been doing for months, if not years. And you have convinced yourself that you cannot kick that habit. Well, let me help you. You can't by yourself. But with God, all things are possible. Folks, we're talking about a God that raised Jesus from the dead. If He can bring life back to that, to to, to Jesus, I know He can help you with the problems that you are struggling with. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. There's that, you know, that, that you know, legalistic uh, tone there. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Folks, there's no doubt in my mind there are slaves in this building. I mean, you are a slave to sin. You have a habit that just does not glorify God, and it is pulling you down. Some of you even hide it well. I don't go to your house. I don't know, but in a crowd, a, a crowd this large, I promise you, people don't know. But God knows, and God can help you. Verse 35, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. And here it is. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. One last scripture and I finished. I'm finished. Galatians. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. And folks, there has to be a death. You have to die to self. I I have been crucified with Christ. No longer it's I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Folks, quit living for yourself. Live for Christ. You are an ambassador for Him. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Then verse 21, I do not set aside the grace of God. Because there's some out here just thinking, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. There's no way. Man, I'm under grace. I'm under grace. Folks, don't be a disgrace to grace. Don't be. And it says, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Folks, it's not the law that saves you. It's not the law that changes you. It is Jesus Christ. We all can change. We know uh, sin does several things in the life of a Christian. Number one, it grieves the Holy Spirit. We know sin does that. Sin dishonors God and hurts your Christian testimony. It robs you of the joy of your salvation. It slows down spiritual growth. Sin keeps you from praying and reading your Bible. Sin hurts your Christian fellowship and Christian relationships. Sin dulls your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Sin causes you to compromise and make bad decisions. And sin causes you to make other Christians 
stumble and justify their own sin. Oh, folks, we need to deal with it. We need to deal with our sin. Folks, I am telling you, you can be free. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I implore you, I ask you, I beg you to come to Jesus. He can help you. You can be saved. And then for the Christian, well, I, I tell you, we're going to open these altars today. And again, if God has spoken to you and you want to come to the altar and say, God, I need your help. This thing, this sin is tripping me up bad. And just leave it at the altar, folks. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for your word. God, your word is right. It is yes. It is amen. And God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just take over right now, Lord. God, I pray that we would just totally focus on our relationship with you. Doesn't matter who I'm sitting next to. Doesn't matter that people are watching me. I pray that we focus on ourselves and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray if there's one here that needs to be saved, they would come today. Jesus can help them. God, I pray if there's one that needs to rededicate their life to Christ, I pray they come or pray at this altar. God, if one needs to come and follow the Lord in baptism, God, I pray that you be clear about that and even church membership. Lord, if they've been coming, they know what we stand for. They know who we are. And God, we want to welcome them with open arms. So God, I pray today there would just be obedience all through this sanctuary. God, do your work, and we will carefully give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?